All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. So my name is Chad Brock. I'm a postdoc in the Wagner Lab. And today I would like to tell you a little bit about some complex admixture in the Lake Kivu and Lake Edward system. So like many of you, I'm interested in diversity and the processes that produce diversity. And the cichlid system has become sort of a model system for studying tempo and mode of evolution of diversity because it's such a diverse group, both in terms of its ecology, species diversity, morphology. And one clade in particular, the Lake Victoria Region Superflock, the LBRS, which is a set of lakes in the East African Rift Legion, has been especially prominent in some of these studies, mostly, most uh, notably Lake Victoria. In a recent paper by Meyer et al, actually found that a lot of this diversity may owe itself to an ancient hybridization event from another haplochromine lineage uh, known as the Upper Knot. And so a lot of this work has been done in Lake Victoria because it's the biggest lake, it's the most diverse, it seems to be one of the most rapid radiation events. Um, but we actually wanted to look at a different lake, a smaller lake within this region, Lake Kivu, and to a lesser extent, Lake Edward. And so here we see a few representatives of Lake Kivu species. There are currently about 15 described cichlid haplochromine species in this lake, potentially more. And initially our idea was to build a phylogeny and use that as a prelude to studying the evolution of this group. And so that's what we've done here. This is a RaxML tree for whole genome sequence data. But what we found is quite a bit of discordance in the relationship between these three taxa, the LBRS, the Congo, and the Upper Nile. Now that's not terribly surprising. This is a rapid radiation, those are short branches, lots of IOS. And as I mentioned, we have integration from the upper Nile into the LBRS, all things that will cause discordance. But it was pretty extreme, at least as far as I was concerned. And this led us to start looking into patterns of admixture in the sampled lineages that we have within the LBRS. And when we did this, we found that, well, if we look at these statistics for this integration of interdifferential allele sharing between the upper Nile and the LBRS, we see it differs across lakes. Now, we don't have much in terms of representatives of Lake Victoria, but it's worth pointing out that these results were actually found in Meyer et al. too. These weren't really addressed. So we can break this down by sampled lineage within Kivu, Edward, and Victoria, and you see sort of a general pattern. So these are the D statistics, and these are the admixture proportions, or the estimates of Upper Nile ancestry within that lineage. And they're color-coded by lake, and we see sort of a general trend as we move from Victoria to Edward into Kivu, we see an increase in the admixture proportion, and we see a stronger signal in terms of the D statistics. So this is all good and fine. But it's not really a direct test of whether there's differential allele sharing within the LBRS, maybe suggestive of multiple admixture events. So in order to do that, we actually want to compare these, line these lineages within the LBRS directly with respect to the upper Nile. And so that leads to a bunch of comparisons. And as a summary of these comparisons, we can use this recently developed metric by Malinsky et al. called the F branch metric. And I won't go into too much detail here, the basic idea is if you have two clades, A and B, you do all possible D statistics comparing lineages across those clades, and you can get a summary statistic of any signal of differential allele sharing. So in this case, our FB for branch B would be 5.795. It suggests more allele sharing between B with respect to A for upper Nile ancestry and possibly an additional event. So we did this for the entire tree. And there's a lot here. Uh, asterisks are denoting uh, significant results uh, after multiple test correction. But what I really want to highlight is these two uh, basal uh, signatures of differential allele sharing here, which are the strongest throughout the tree. In my mind, that suggests that there might be additional admixture events, but we actually want to formally test that. So can we do that? Well, we can. We can use something known as the F4 rank test. So this was developed by Reich et al. in 2009 to look at the peopling of the Americas. And the basic idea here is, is that we can take this F4 test statistic with four taxa. We fix the P and R taxa. We vary S and Q. S is going to be all of the possible source lineages, in this case the upper Nile. 
the Q is going to be all of the possible sync lineages, in this case the LERS, and we do all of the possible F4 statistics. So we get this big matrix of these values. And what we can do with this matrix is we can estimate the rank of it. And the rank of it, plus one, gives us an estimate of the minimum number of admixture events between Q and S. So that's great. We can get an estimate of the minimum number of events, but it'd also be nice to locate, if possible, within the tree where these events may have occurred, which branches they occurred on. So how can we do that? Well, we came up with an idea that is slightly modified from something that, that Reich et al. did in terms of doing a series of nested subsets of F F4 rankings. So for instance, if there's a shared event between clades A and B, if we do the full rank for all of these taxa, we expect a rank of one, which is a minimum number of admixture events, I use quotes here, of two, because you also include the basal connection here. So there's sort of two connections between the upper bound and the clade of interest. If we drop B and do the rank test, we still have that admixture event, so we still expect a rank of one and a number of admixture events of two. Similarly, if we drop A and use B, we get the same thing. But if we drop both A and B, we now drop a rank. We get a rank of zero, a single connection, which just states that there's a tree that represents the relationships between the remaining lineage C and the upper Nile. So we did this for our maximum likelihood phylogeny. So we dropped all possible branches sequentially and redid the F4 rank test. And when we did that, we found out that we could identify three admixture events. The original one is the one found by Meyer et al. and shared by all of the LVRS lineages. And then we found two more, one immediately sort of one node up from that, and then another one a node up from that. Now these results are consistent with previous, or sort of other evidence too. So for instance, we would expect that the increasing number of admixture events would result in an increased proportion of Upper Nile ancestry, and that's exactly what we see. So here we're moving uh, from left to right, increasing number of admixture events, and we see a general increase in the amount of Upper Nile ancestry. Similarly, lineages that share more recent admixture events should have bigger blocks of that Upper Nile ancestry. And again, that's what we see. Lineages that have the more recent events have longer upper Nile blocks. So getting back to discordance, when we look at support for these different genealogies across the genome, so this is a twist topology weight plot of 10,000 base pair windows, what we find, and I thought this was surprising, is that we actually have stronger support for the quote-unquote intergression topology then we do what we think is the species topology, what we actually find in all of our phylogenetic analyses. And this was surprising to me until I did simulations and showed that this is actually what you expect with an appreciable amount of integration. And many of you may be familiar, there was a paper that just came out by Simon Martin that found the exact same thing in Heliconius. And if we look at pattern counts across SNPs, we actually find that we do get what we think is the true species topology favored but it's not that much favored over the integration topology, only about 5% more. So these guys are really integressed. And in fact, they're so integressed, so here I'm showing the difference between this topology's frequency and this topology's frequency. If we look at this across these lineages, we actually find that one, Microchrysomelis, favors the integration topology more than what we think is the true species topology. And these, five lineages here are unable to reject effectively equal relatedness to those two lineages. So these are really, really admixed lineages. So that was cool and it was interesting to look at this ancestral event and sort of complicate things from what we've previously seen. But we also were interested in looking at what's going on within the radiation. Is there continual admixture as these lineages are diverging? And so we looked at that, and I'm going to go over this briefly. This is sort of a mess. I understand that. What we did is we did this F branch metric that we talked about earlier, but we did this for every single species within the radiation that we sampled. So we're effectively looking at differential allele sharing with respect to one species and all of the other branches across the tree where differential allele sharing is possible. And when we do that, 
to sort of summarize, we see a number of branches that show differential allele sharing suggesting integration. I'm not really going to dissect the details here. What I really want to point out is, is that, and what we're excited about, is that this system is pretty cool in the sense that it's providing a sort of, I, I won't say ideal, but maybe a very unique system for studying multiple modes of hybridization and how that influences diversification. So not only do we have multiple ancestral hybridization events uh, possibly produce or introducing variation that's important for diversification, but we also have this sort of syngamion model of hybridization throughout the process of diversification. And so we're really excited to look at this in more detail. And I'm really interested uh, at the sort of temporal scope of these diversification events and looking at how that influences the relevance of any genetic variation that's been introduced on the diversification of these lineages. And some of you may have seen uh, my collaborator, collaborator uh, Reed Olson's poster on gene enrichment in the system. So we started actually looking at genes and looking at whether there's differential uh, enrichment across sort of hybrid classes. And so we're gonna to continue to do that as well as look for signatures of selection uh, across these loci. All right, that's all I've got. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Wagner Lab, the Say Austin Lab, the ARC uh, cluster at UYO and the following funding sources. And I guess I spoke very quickly. So, <laughs> two minutes of awkward silence. <laughs> Well, so I will say the, the, the paper, the Malawi paper, actually found something very similar. So multiple ancestral events and quite a bit of ongoing integration within the Malawi radiation. Um, one of the things that I should have noted is the reason we probably see multiple integration events in Edward and, and Kivu, at least with respect to some of the other lakes in the LVRS region, is they have upper Nile representatives syntopically within the same lake. So Gracilia is found in Kivu, and Pharyngalis is found in Edward. And so there's, they can ingress like mad because they're right there, right next to each other. Um, cichlids in general can breed with each other after millions of years of divergence, so that seems to certainly make this lineage likely to be you know, able to do this as it diversifies for one reason or another. And I think we're still sort of dissecting why they can hybridize so readily for so long. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. The geology is really cool with Kivu, but I didn't have time to talk about that. So. Anything else? 